live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back to Moscone here. We're in San Francisco, VMworld 2019. I'm John Walls, along with Stu Miniman here on theCUBE. Thanks for joining us here for our first of three days of coverage here at a very exciting program. I, I, I was just blown away by the keynotes this morning. We'll talk about that with Beth Phelan uh, and Rajiv Ramaswamy here. Uh, Beth is president and GM of data protection at Dell EMC, and Rajiv, of course, the chief operating officer at VMware. So thanks to you both for joining us. Good, Good to, to see here. you both. Yeah. Glad uh, to be here. Um, so let's talk, first off, let's just talk about the, if you will, the vibe of the keynotes. Uh, you know, Pat, great command at the stage, obviously. A lot of big announcements, uh, but I was just, I thought the whole presentation and the size of the crowd and the reactions were, were, were fairly impressive. What was I, your take I, on I it? I totally agree, that? being yeah. in the audience, it was um, comprehensive, it was holistic, it told a story that people could connect with, and it recognized just how much the world of IT is changing and what VMware is doing and influencing that. I was impressed. Yeah. No, no, from my, my vantage point of view, being on the inside here, yeah. it's, you know, our portfolio continues to get broader and broader. Our relevance to customers keeps getting bigger. Yeah. And this year in particular, we had a whole series of announcements, you know. There are two major acquisitions, our largest two acquisitions over the last week. Uh, so there was a lot to digest. And in fact, you know, we were actually, you know, working on putting that story together at the very last minute, as you can imagine, because you know, these acquisitions were literally announced on Thursday. <laughs> so uh, a lot came together. It came together beautifully. I thought Pat did a great job putting it all together and giving the story. Yeah, I know the pivotal, obviously, everybody's in what ten days ago, two weeks ago, say it can't happen that fast, can it? Well, the answer is yes, <laughs> it can happen that fast. Let so me give you one more story. Yes, there. Yes, so yeah, you might remember Callum Eid was on stage. Uh, he was a guy who swam across the English Channel mm -hmm. at the very beginning. So just to tell you how last minute that was, he finished his swim. I talked to him on Friday morning. And then I went to Pat and said, Pat, you know, one of our guys actually uh, swam across the English Channel. <laughs> and he said, yeah, we should have him on stage at VMworld. <laughs> so we flew him over over the weekend. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. come to VMworld and there he was on stage. Oh, so. that's impressive. It was yeah. a great story. Yeah. It was a good call to bring him in. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the, you know, obviously you, you have this, uh, you have a strong partnership um, that got a little stronger. Uh, mm -hmm. with some announcements mm -hmm. today. So yeah. let's get into that a little bit. Beth, if you would talk a little bit about uh, what you announced on stage or what was announced on stage today. Yeah, I mean, there are three things that we're talking about this week with our good partners in VMware. Um, how we make sure that we have data protection for the Dell EMC cloud, for the VMware cloud, excuse me, on Dell EMC. Um, previewing what we're doing to protect Kubernetes environments, which is um, super exciting. And then the project we talked about um, just quickly on stage this morning around how we're doing work together to bring Power Protect um, you know, into as tight as possible to have the best integration for vSphere and our VMware customers. So, Majib, anything that yeah, look, I missed? Uh, yeah, no, no, I, at the big picture level, look, I mean, you've had a long history in data protection solutions. Uh, you're, you've modernized your portfolio quite mm -hmm. a bit over the last year yep. with the introduction of the new X400 appliances and the IDPA Power Protect software. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've been talking together for a while now about mm -hmm. how, what can we be doing together better. Mm -hmm. And this just came across, you know, we've been working on this together and now we have specific things to talk about. So on the first one, which is really data protection for VMware Cloud. Now VMware Cloud uh, on AWS, one of the first use cases, important use cases is actually around disaster recovery. So customers want to use the cloud as a data, as a, as a backup or a DR site. Mm -hmm. And uh, very cost effective to do that, very, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Now we've been working to continue to improve that solution and making it much more broadly applicable, making use of native cloud storage capabilities. For example, Amazon S3. And so that's really the collaboration that we're doing with Beth's team here, where we're using their underlying technology to build a VMware data uh, disaster recovery as a service mm -hmm. that will work on all VMware cloud environments and make use of native cloud storage capabilities. So very powerful, brings a lot of value for our customers together. Yeah, yeah and I think that everybody you know, watching probably understands just how important it is to have a DR site, but for many companies it's cost prohibitive and really old school to think about having a dedicated DR site. So using the cloud as your destination, if something were to happen, you had to recover, is an excellent fit. And I expect it to be one of the fastest growing use cases. We're already seeing it. It's going to continue to grow dramatically um, going forward, having DR as a service as a core to people's recovery um, strategy. 
Yeah. Rajiv, one, one of the things we've been watching is VMware's always had a robust ecosystem, mm -hmm. but it's been going through a major shift. Yes. Uh, you know, VMware kind of at the center and you know, the server storage and network around it to where everything fits into the multi-cloud environment. When we see you know, data protection with VMware Cloud on Dell EMC, it, it's obviously a natural fit because you know, it's under there. What do you talk to your partners about when you say, okay, the, the, the Dell side of things is getting further embedded into VMware, how do you make sure that you have an open and robust oh, yeah. ecosystem without uh, you know, Look, balancing that's, that? That's a great question. You know, VMware has always prided itself on being a platform company, yeah. and you're only a platform company if you actually have a broad ecosystem of people who are building and developing on your platform. Sure. So we are not walking away from that one little bit. We continue to support a very broad-based set of providers across many different functions, whether it be data protection, whether it be security, whether it be compliance, you know, a whole bunch of uh, things around the platform. Uh, what we will do, though, is we will pick a set of partners and we will do deeper integrations with them. Right? We're always going to have broad APIs available for everybody. Just as another example, you know, with Carbon Black that you saw today, uh, you know, we had actually partnered with mm -hmm. Carbon Black on a deep integration between Carbon Black and App Defense. Okay? But at the same time, we have open APIs. You know, with every guest introspection provider that there is, and we will continue to maintain that with every endpoint provider that there is. It's much the same way here. We're going to do deep integration with Beth's team. Uh, we are actually using some of their technologies to en enhance our services, mm -hmm. but also enabling them to do better integration with vSphere and the whole VMware environment, while at the same time allowing a rich ecosystem of third-party providers to work with us on, on top of our platforms. Yeah. yeah. Beth, was wondering if uh, you, you can help us dig in a little bit to that uh, you know, Kubernetes space. So, mm -hmm. you know, w w obviously a big presence here at the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Prevalent talked in the keynote. You know, when I walk the show floor, e everybody's talking about mm -hmm. Kubernetes. So from mm -hmm. the data protection standpoint, mm -hmm. you know, what's been done to you know, move into that environment? What's mm -hmm. different that people might not have known from your group from just a couple of years ago? Yeah, a couple of things. One, we've been working on this jointly with John Rose's organization and doing an incubation on this for well over a year. Um, and working with Valero, making sure that everything we're doing is tied very closely with what's going on in VMware. And as you start talking about the container space, what you're saying about data protection, it's a different set of assets that you need to protect. Um, you have to make sure that you're protecting the metadata, the metadata, you have to bring up the whole environment. And so it's sort of a variation on a theme. And what we're particularly proud of is that we're approaching it in a way that's really grounds up in designing data protection, not retrofitting the past, but what are the needs for a Kubernetes um, environment and make sure that they can restore that as, you know, come back to whatever data they need to do and whatever application state they need to get back to. Yeah, you talked about Valero too. I mean, mm -hmm. so how does this, how, what you're talking about, how does that enhance or how does, how's that adding to the data protection capabilities of that then? I mean, what, what are you building on uh, in terms of in, enhanced services there? Well, I think the, I mean, the, what I understand about the project, and I'd like to hear your point of view too, is you know, um, as the Valero builds out and working on the Kubernetes environment, it it's becomes the center for people's um, production environment, right? And as you move into production environment, data protection becomes an essential part of that. So as a couple of years ago, Kubernetes might have been something that people were dabbling with or maybe had not their most important um, applications running on. It's now becoming center and core. And so what we're doing working with VMware is making sure that you know, directly integrated into that, the use cases they need around backup, um, you know, disaster recovery, and, and all types of RTO and RPOs are all met even though now they're being run, the application's being run in a Kubernetes environment. Mm -hmm. So look, our vision around this, we talked about uh, Tanzu, VMware Tanzu, which is yeah. a whole portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's a great name, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the, uh, the portfolio, the idea here is you're going to have build, run, and manage. Yeah. And when you look at the manage component of this, it's not just that every mm -hmm. service is going to be delivered by VMware. There's going to be a set of third-party services that run on top of this platform that will do functions like backup, right. disaster recovery for Kubernetes clusters. And uh, my anticipation is that Dell uh, would be a for, you know, second party, third party on that, on that environment, right, as part of the overall Tanzu portfolio as a marketplace type. Yep, uh, that's what service. we're working towards. Yeah, yeah just uh, following up on that, Tanzu, uh, you know, VMware has mostly been a platform and infrastructure layer for applications. That's correct. You know, Pivotal was the group that really dealt with the modern, yes. but you've made some acquisitions. Data protection's always had that integration with the application. What's changing now that requires Dell and VMware to kind of delve up stack a little bit more than it might have? Uh, well, for in us, the past? it's very for us, it's very simple. As Pat already articulated, you know, the world is moving to is all about how to build and manage your applications portfolio. Yeah. 
That's become a CIO's top job. And so for us to be relevant to that space, you know, infrastructure companies naturally need to move up, mm -hmm. uh, address the needs of application developers. And while at the same time, the application developers need the infrastructure teams to deliver the infrastructure that they can easily build, uh, run and manage these apps uh, without having to do it all themselves. So that's really, that together, that bringing together the developers and the IT operators is what we are doing. And that's the rationale for why we brought Pivotal in-house and why we're building this overall times new portfolio. It's kind of what goes around comes around, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. Well, as, as Pat explained, right? Right. You know, six, seven years ago, we weren't really in a position to focus on it. Right. And it made sense to have Pivotal stand the alone, and right. they invested, they built up their franchise over time, and here we are, the time is right. Right. Rajiv, and Beth, thank you. I yeah, appreciate the time, good to see you. Uh, congratulations on uh, day one, off to oh, a yeah. great start. And, not, uh, not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know, and nor for us, <laughs> but, but a great start. Thank you so much. Thank you, so Good yeah. to see you both. Yeah. Beth, always a pleasure. Yes. Thanks for being with us Thank once you. again oh, on theCUBE. Sorry, sorry. Back before, live here on theCUBE, you're watching right. theCUBE coverage of VMworld 2019.